Here is my wig tutorial of how I turn the left wig into the right wig as well as some just useful general wig styling tips along the way. First let's go over what I used. So I used a wig clamp. As you can see it's clamped to the table. This was really helpful as well as a good quality wig headstand. Then I used Got To Be Glued for the finishing touches but I wouldn't say it's a necessity but then you do have to have the Got To Be Glued hairspray. I would advise using a hair comb instead of a brush to brush out wigs. It's just I find it a lot easier and helps get less tangled. I've then got a clothes steamer. It can really help redirect the direction of some hairs, but it's not a necessity. But then we have a hairdryer, which definitely is. You'll need just a cheap hairdryer will do for your wig. Then there's a crimper for those who want to crimp. And then which is more specialised, I got another wig because I wanted to add a different colour hair strand to my Tartaglia wig which I'll show how I did in a bit. The last two items are little hair bands to, to section your wig up when you're going to choose how you want your spikes to appear and then little hair clips which really help secure the wig in place which I'm about to show you next. As you can see here there are little hair clips in the wig head and this really helps when trying to secure the wig once done onto your head and would really recommend. Most wigs don't have it in as you can see here so I recommend sewing them in if you can. And then you want to make sure your wig is ready and complete before you start styling. So for any of you who know Genshin Impact, you'll know that Tartaglia has a little white strip in his hair. This wasn't included in the base wig and I knew it wouldn't be. So I bought a very cheap blonde wig and then as you can see here, I very carefully cut out um, strands. I cut out in the end two strands. I had to stitch these in place and in order to do so I had to very carefully separate the parting to put it in where I wanted it to be um, and then with stitching I went in and out just a normal running stitch uh, back and forth a few times and I did overlap them as you can see earlier to make them just that bit thicker because separately they're quite thin so you want to make sure you add as much as you need and make sure to trim off any loose bits that you don't need because you don't want it bulking or showing in the wig. Some general tips to be mindful of whilst you're doing this is make sure you're very careful where your needle goes and that you don't accidentally pull in hairs into the wig. If you do notice this, it's quite simple. Just get a needle and unpick them before it gets too bad and there are too many clumps. This is what it looks like afterwards. I didn't add too much as he only has a very small strand, but here you can see what two little strands of hair looks like. You can always add more, but do it at this point before you start styling. And if it doesn't flow in the direction you want it, to a steamer will help with this. Next you want to really understand your wig. So what helped me is by drawing it and it really helped me learn which spike is which. So I went over a template as you can see here and I labelled each spike which I could use as reference when referring back how to style my wig. Now it's time to keep referring to your reference image and section the hair out as you want it. As you can see here lots going on. Um, this is all videos of me separating the hair out according to my photo just by a list, little elastic bands by this point. You can change it later on. This isn't the hard deadline of separating things out, but it's good to try and do it as you think you want it now. And if you're curious, you can see the little dark marks on my hands. I burnt them by using hair curlers. I would advise using heat resistant gloves when using a crimper, which we'll do in the next stage. Then if you have any spikes that go against the natural flow of the hair, this is where I'd recommend introducing the steamer. It can be done with back combing and hairspray and the hairdryer, but it can just look a bit more natural if you use a steamer. I'd hold the spike in the position I want it and then just steam it and then it will find it will naturally stay like that, hopefully. Sorry my hand's in the way, it's just the way I had to hold it. Then for a spike pointing upwards, I'd get the elastic band and tie it quite near the base. This will help just reinforce that it's meant to be sticking upwards and not outwards. I would then go over and crimp the sections. So I take each individual strand slash spike that I wanted and crimp them as a strand. I wouldn't combine them with other strands. This can just make help all the clumps kind of stay together. Before you crimp each strand, just make sure to brush it out so that all the hairs are trying to go in the right direction. Then you can see here, I don't just crimp once. If you crimp once, I find that leaves quite big marks. If you see on the left, um, I'll put a video of what it looks like when I crimp multiple times. Uh, and I'll go over it again, maybe usually a bit quicker, and over again and again. And that kind of helps disguise the crimp marks so you don't see the bumpy effect that crimping can leave. 
and it will just make it look a little bit better if if you don't want to see those crimp marks. So the reason I'm not using hairspray at the moment is because if I spray the crimped bit now, it will get on bits that aren't crimped and then I find if you crimp something that's already been covered in hairspray, it gives you a different effect, um, as I found out with my Dane's Leaf wig, uh, and I prefer it before, so what I do now, as you'll see me, I go over all the wig, crimp all the wig, and then I will go and hairspray the bits into shape. Crimping the wig can take a really long time, so as you can see, I'm actually watching Miraculous in the background, it's quite an easy one to watch, uh, you want something easy that you don't have to focus on too much, because you do need to have your eyes and attention on the wig. Um, and you can see I've got multiple screens going on here. So if you look at our left hand screen, here you can see I separated um, the layers to try and give me that thinner, thinner hair strand to crimp. This usually leaves you with a better effect, but again, it does take more time uh, and it depends how much detail you want to go into and how fluffy you want it. If you can then see on the right hand side, I am crimping and just going over all the different sections. Make sure not to miss out a section. So this side of the wig hasn't been crimped yet, but if I start to turn it round, this side of the wig has been crimped. You can kind of see it's a bit more 3D and it's got that volume. Crimping a wig does make it easier to style and can help it hold its form a bit longer, but it does have its downsides. Once crimping it all and walking away and seeing it in a fresh light, you might realise there are some crimp marks that you want to go over and get rid of, possibly even straighten the top layer of each strand that will really help get away them crimp marks, which I didn't do here. So now comes the fun part of styling the wig in the section you want it. So I refer to my reference image, identify which spike I want it to be. I then go over and brush out each spike. You want it all to be kind of going in the right way. If there is a spike that doesn't go in the right way or some hair that just doesn't naturally fall where you want it to, the steamer can really help with this. Uh, but I didn't have to do it. So I brushed out the strand I wanted and then from about a little way away, probably about... 20 centimeters I sprayed some hairspray on it you don't want to go too close or too much to start with you can always add more if you need uh, especially adding a lot around the tip because this is the bit you want to hold together and that will help hold its shape for longer uh, you can then if needs add more hairspray but if you add too much you can leave this white dewy residue stuff on the wig that doesn't look very natural so hairspray and then hair dryer and then hopefully your spike will be in place so I'm going to show you again from a slightly different angle how I'm going to exactly do the spikes. So brushing it out uh, and a few tips I've found is when you brush it, brush with the hairdryer slightly tilted downwards. That will help get out any knots and always brush from the bottom. If your wig is really tangled, brush from the bottom up. That means any knots that are in the bottom will brush out and then any new knots will brush into it and it won't all clump together. A tip I have learned and would definitely give to people, especially if you're working with longer wigs, is when you hair dry the wig, try and hair dry down where possible and don't put it on the full blow setting. Put it on the higher heat if you have, I have two options, um, but don't put it on the full blown setting because this can completely mess up the wig and blow it out of the way you want it to go. And if you blow down instead of up, there's less chance of the strands splitting um, and going everywhere. So you'll see here, I try and blow down when styling it into position. The only time I put the hairdryer up is when I'm trying to dry some bits underneath the curls and that I do make sure I have on the least pressurized setting as you might call it. Normally what I would do would wait until the end until cutting, but I realized some of the lot uh, side bits were really extra long and they were way too long so always wait until you've crimped and um, styled it before cutting I find unless you know there's a huge amount that needs to be taken off because when you crimp you can lose some length and then again when you style you can lose some length so you might not need as much as you think and always try and cut maybe at a slight angle or use thinning scissors are preferred um, but I didn't have thinning scissors, so I just tried to cut some smaller bits off where I could, restyling them on top if needed. So as you can see, I was styling all the different bits. Um, I tried to, because of how characters are, the back bits, instead of just stick out, which would make the sides stick out a lot, I tried to sweep them very slightly backwards. As you can see in the top left, the spikes aren't sticking out, they are slightly facing the backwards. Uh, I think this just looks a bit more natural. This is just a personal choice of mine of how I style. And then if you see on the bottom left, I am trying to stick some spikes up. 
uh, you'll have to maybe backcomb a bit of the base. Um, don't I wouldn't advise backcombing too much. It just can slowly ruin the wig, and just go over and over the spikes with hairspray if you need. And I did crimp some bits that again I thought I didn't crimp enough the first time, but I'd advise trying to do that all earlier. But just explaining why you might see me do some extra crimping here. You can also see it's not just for a goofy design. I put the little child with the eyeballs on. I want to see where my eyeballs would be when I put the wig on. This really helped kind of measure up how long each section could be. So that's why I did that. And it helps me kind of style around the shape of the head. It's definitely rewarding seeing it all come together, which you can at this point. So here you can see the non-styled part versus the styled part of my child wig. And I do know some bits were long, so I did trim them again at the end. But that's the difference, so there we go. Once all styled, this is where I did the trimming. You can see I looked at the reference picture and I picked up the scissors and I tried to like mark out where in accordance to the eye it should be cut. And I'd always advise just trying it on, seeing how it fits on your face before cutting anything because it can be deceiving what a wig cap looks like compared to your head and the shape. So just have a think about how you want to do this and maybe try it on if possible. Here you can see in a bit more detail of how I cut the spikes. So I tried to cut it down to make it look a bit more natural instead of as again going straight across. Don't do that. Uh, thinning scissors, hairdresser thinning scissors would be a lot better here for you. And I resprayed um, and styled and went into the spike that I wanted it to be. Ta-da! Now I went over and did the touch up of the wigs. As you can see here, there's a bit of strand that just kind of flaps on the top. It isn't sticking down. So to prevent your hands that are probably very sticky with wig glue at this point, I sprayed some glue on it and then got the end of my pointy comb to kind of smooth it down and then put some hair dryer on it because the glue is less likely to stick to your comb than your sticky hand at this point because I can promise you your hands and probably phone will be covered in wig glue by this point. Now once you've gone around, trimmed any loose bits of hairs, it's time to be to put the got to be glued on and now this really helps your spikes stay in place. You might realise here as you can see, it's a bit separated, it's quite easy to go apart. The got to be hairspray hasn't fully secured it. So I put a very little bit, as you can see here, not much, you don't even need that amount because it can make it look a bit white and gently spread it on the tips of the hair. Now you can use the hair dryer to heat this up but it won't completely dry this is something you'll have to leave overnight but i can promise you once you've believed it and you don't need much this will hold like it will feel like a rock when you touch it and it will be a lot better for if you're planning to take this uh, wig into a con or outside in a cosplay or even just constant use inside it really helps keep the wig maintained styled as it is and holds the spikes together and stops them fraying you will find your wigs will always need a little bit of a touch up and in a video i redid dia's wig because i had partied too hard in it and it got really really frayed but this going over the wig with this and just smoothing it out can really help just and then you can see here is my speedy putting on wig glue. I can promise you this is at 35 times speed. It does take longer than this. But then your wig is done. The next morning I went over to try and see how hard my spikes are. And as you can see here, I give it a good flick. They remain in place. This is because of the crimping and the wig glue. And here's the finished result. Feel free to check me out on Instagram or TikTok, Molly's and Lollies. Hey queen, it's Tartaglia. But you can call me child. I make content for free, so please like and subscribe and comment if I've helped you. Thank you, bye!